Okay guys, welcome to a new series on this channel where I will be editing the raw file sent to me by my Patreon supporters hopefully showing you guys some tips and tricks along the way and there will be a longer version of this video over on my Patreon channel but I'll do like a short highlight reel for my YouTube channel so that everybody can benefit from these videos but I asked my supporters over on Patreon to send me the uh, Milky Way images just to add a bit of a theme to it uh, so I'll be going through those today and seeing what little tips and tricks I could teach you guys. So I'm going to start with this image sent in by Adam Gale 23 and unfortunately the JPEG preview is really, really small. Um, but it's a really nice image. He sent the raw, so I'm going to edit that. And it's really overpowering light here, which hopefully we can do something about. So before I continue, I'd just like to give a message from the sponsors of today's video, NordVPN. And if you don't know what a VPN is, you probably need to. You might think that using incognito mode protects your internet history from being logged, but think again. Your internet service provider is logging your browsing habits, your passwords, your email addresses, your personal data, everything, even when you're in incognito mode. And here in the UK, by law, they have to keep at least one year's minimum of all of your browsing habits and data. So using a VPN service, your internet connection is really directed through one of their remote servers and it is also encrypted so nobody can snoop on you and log your browsing data or your personal information and it also protects you from hackers. I've been using NordVPN for two or three years now and I will never connect to a public Wi-Fi without using a VPN service because you never know how secure that network is and you don't know who else is on that Wi-Fi network trying to steal people's data and steal your data. NordVPN has over 5,500 servers all around the world, so you can pretend to be in a different country as well. So if, for example, you're in the UK, but you want to watch a show that's on American Netflix, you can connect to one of the servers in America, and then you can access American Netflix. Now, nothing this good is ever free, so if you use the link in the video description down below, you'll get 70% off working out at just £2.68 a month which I think is a small price to pay for your privacy and your security. So use the link in the video description down below. Use the code Allen, and you will get 70% off NordVPN. So this is the raw file. It's great. It's a place I know well. It's Three Cliffs Bay in, in Wales. The composition is great. Milky Way. Nice and vertical in the middle. Not a big fan of this planet. Sort of right on the edge. I think it's Jupiter. Um... I just, I'm just not a big fan of having distractions on the edge of the frame. I like to have a bit of breathing space. So maybe it would be nice to have taken this photo, if possible, like an hour later when the Milky Way was a bit more over here and, and Jupiter was a bit more in the frame. But So I'm going to start by fixing the white balance, and I like to use the picker. It might be worth trying it a few times, but it's done a good job. You basically want to pick an area that's supposed to be neutral. Um, the area of sky in the corner is normally a pretty good point as well or somewhere on the horizon that's a bit too cool somewhere about there looks pretty good to me uh, I'm gonna fix the lens correction so I normally like to pull a bit of detail out of the shadows and the blacks give a little pop to the whites and then bring the highlights down just to darken that sky um, bring it back down a little bit somewhere on there the horizon, is that horizon straight? I don't think it is, no. So I'm going to straighten the horizon quickly. Now it'd be nice to add a bit more of a pop to the white. See, the problem is this light here is getting a little blown out. So hopefully I can show you a little trick to bring that down. But whilst I'm zoomed in here, I'm going to use my noise presets just to get rid of the noise nice and quickly. Might darken the sky a little bit. I'm just going to drag a graduated filter over and drop the exposure just a little bit add a bit of contrast maybe and a little pop back in the whites something like that and if you guys have been following me for a while you know that I do like a vignette so I sort of add my own custom vignette and again I really like to feather them quite a lot and just drop the exposure a little bit 
maybe add some contrast to the edges just make, and yeah so just make sure it's nice and feathered in I might bring it over this way a little bit just to send to the Milky Way it's looking good and then what I'm going to do I'm going to create a virtual copy and I'm going to lower the whites zoom in onto this bit here um, maybe lower the highlights just drop the whites because it's really distracted in this image so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the two of these go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop so what I'm going to do basically is use a layer mask on this layer so I've got my edit on top and the darkened image underneath uh, and what you could do is then with a black brush and a low opacity like let's go with 13% you can kind of just brush back over that area and just like lower the opacity of that light the only problem is you can see that the area around is getting dark as I'm brushing that in so what I would actually do, I'm going to delete that layer mask start again um, this is where luminosity masks become really useful so there are loads of different ways you can create luminosity masks you can create them manually if you want but there's loads of these free plugins now I'm still using TK Actions version 4 because I like it and I don't see any need to upgrade but there's loads of others like Raya Pro um, and Lumenzia I think is another one um, but I think there's a TK free version as well that just has the basic luminosity masks but um, and this is just going to control my brush in so I'm looking for this basically so where it's white is where my brush in is going to be restricted so I'm selecting the lights too because that was the one I'm going to hide the ends by pressing control H and now on this layer mask when I brush black it's only going to brush back the bright areas what you could have done is shot a separate exposure on the night with lower settings just so you could do a sort of HDR but this is a way of doing it with a single exposure basically kind of just help reduce that light there because it's such a distraction for what is otherwise an awesome image really annoying that it's even on in the first place look at it, it's ridiculous so back in Lightroom now, I might actually lower the saturation of the greens I don't like having saturated greens at night um, I really want to help the illusion that you know this is night and you'll find quite often when you've got green in an image, you really need to target the yellow channel to desaturate. But that looks a lot better now, it looks a lot more like night time. I might increase the orange just to leave some saturation in the image, something like that. Um, you might be able to lift a bit more of the Milky Way now with the whites, that's better. Drop the highlights just to cover that horizon. and maybe just another vignette just to bring attention to the Milky Way a bit better sweet something like that yeah I'm happy with that I mean I hope that trick is useful for some of you it would have been better to have done multiple exposures in the in the field, it'd be even better to go over there and just smash that light, <laughs> um, or at least ask them politely to turn it off. But um, yeah, really nice image. So I've got these two images here. I'm not sure who sent them in, but a sky and a foreground, really nice exposures. So you can see ISO 3200, 24 mil f 2.8, and 122 seconds. You got really nice. Uh, noise, not noise, completely noise free, but really nice details. Um, not so noisy foreground. 
And I believe it was shot in A7 III, so I'd advise not to use ISO 3200 when you're doing these really long exposures. Do like 800 or even 640, um, which is what they did for the sky. Um, so I'm surprised they didn't do the same thing for the foreground, but still. The ISO A7 III is ISO invariant after ISO 640, so it doesn't matter what setting you use in terms of ISO, you can change the exposure in, in post-production with no issues, so... Um, but this will be good because I can show you guys quickly how to blend. Now, before you blend, it's always good to make sure that your images are at the same brightness, the same exposure. So because the other one was shot at ISO 800, I think all we have to do really is minus two stops. And it's you know pretty much the same brightness as, as the other image. Um, but I will lift the shadows just to get that detail back. Um, I'm actually going to do a little bit of noise reduction before actually, oh you can see there's a lot of, see th this is the one thing that bothers me about Sony, you sometimes when you get these really weird colours in your stars, really odd, um, so in lens corrections, I'm just going to defringe, and I'm going to extend the colour range just to make sure I've got all of them, get the red ones, get the aqua, yeah, it's really annoying. There's something weird about Sony's spatial algorithm in the RAW files. You end up with like really weird colored stars, but that's that's fixed it pretty much. It's still a bit of yellow and cyan. Let's extend that. Okay, that's better. And in the detail tab, I'm just gonna do a little bit of noise reduction. Not too much. So I don't want to lose the detail. It's really good data anyway. Something around 14 is fine. And then with this one, I'm going to do 14 as well, just to keep it the same, because the exposure settings are the same. Edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So the first thing I need to do is make the canvas bigger, so I'm going to come up to image, canvas, um, I'm going to extend from the bottom, and I want the height to be, I don't know, let's go with 7,000. And then I'm going to move the Milky Way up. Let's bring it to the top just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to put the foreground layer on top. And using the quick selection tool, or you could press W. Um, you can change the brush size if you want. I'm just going to brush across the sky. Uh, and then select and mask. And zoom in. You see all these trees here, basically when you use the Refine Edge Brush Tool, now I'm going to warn you, if you don't have a decent computer, this is going to be very taxing on your computer and you might have to wait a really long time just to do like a little brush stroke, it's kind of annoying. But this is the, the quickest and best way to blend foreground and sky. For most of the time, there are other techniques as well. Um, but this one's just so quick and easy. Now I've got that sky selected. All I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a layer mask to that layer. Um, but it's like the opposite of what I want because the layer mask is was what I selected. So I just need to invert the layer mask. Control I. And now I've got that foreground. Turn my Milky Way layer back on. And there it is, blended, really nice and easy. Looks really nice because the two exposures were the same brightness and the same settings. Trees look great. One thing I really like to do is add contrast into the mid-tones. So I'm just going to select the mid-tones one, do a curves layer, brighten the brighter areas, bring the shadows back down. Have a little play with that S curve to add contrast into the mid-tones. It just adds a really nice pop. Um, another thing you can do is just like a normal basic curves layer. And using this hand symbol here, you can target certain tones. So if you look at the curve, as I move the eyedropper across the image, it shows me where those tones are on the curve. So you can choose the core and add a, a point there choose the dark horse nebula there and then what I can basically do is select that use the arrow keys on the keyboard and say brighten the core area 
darken the the dark sky area and it just adds a really nice targeted contrast to the Milky Way you can see it's already done like a great job adding some real nice contrast in the Milky Way it's probably added too much contrast in the foreground but what we can do then is on that contrast layer I'm just taking a black brush medium opacity I can just brush over the foreground just to bring back some of that foreground maybe the horizon as well just like that so yeah look how simple that is when you've got really nice data when you're using a star tracker and you're doing a nice long exposure for your foreground two simple curves layers guys look how nice the milky way is looking lovely detail and obviously I could spend a lot more time on this image but it's just a nice demonstration of when you've got good data and good images you really don't need to do much editing to get a good image so next up is this image from Jacob Sana just a nice single exposure 13 seconds ISO 8000 take it with an A7S just a nice simple single exposure um, let's see what we can do with this so first of all I want to see what's in the foreground so let's just lift the shadows so there is some nice detail there and lift the blacks as well drop the highlights to make that sky darker and a little pop to the whites it's like my go-to editing now the white balance is off um, you can use like the eyedropper I normally try somewhere above the horizon somewhere in the corner that's probably the closest you need to find somewhere that's neutral um, and another way is just like looking at the histogram so you can see like the blue channel and the yellow channel you kind of want to balance them and the same with the magenta and the green so if I shift the blue and the yellow you kind of want to balance those yellow and blue tones so somewhere around there and then if you go to here you see look there's too much pink towards the highlights there's too much magenta in the highlights you want to balance that magenta and green so I think this camera's been astro modified yeah so somewhere around there looks a lot more balanced maybe a little play with the blue and yellow somewhere around there I kind of want to make sure that there's good separation for the hydrogen alpha emission nebulae in the image somewhere around there I'm just going to reset the vibrance and the saturation that looks yeah that looks pretty good that looks pretty good and the one thing which I think I've probably already said in this video is I just don't like having greens at night it just feels really weird to me like green at night I don't know it, it just doesn't it just ruins that sense of it being night so I like to sort of desaturate um no let's darken this sky by increasing the contrast because when you use the exposure you, you basically darken everything including the Milky Way but when you use the contrast you sort of darken in dark areas and brighten in bright areas so you see how the Milky Way stays there it's a really nifty little trick when you're doing this um, sort of single exposure editing so that's darkened the sky quite nicely and it hasn't diminished the Milky Way and then I might go and add a bit of a vignette to the image somewhere on there and let's just drop the exposure just a touch just to kind of bring attention to the tree subject and the Milky Way core might angle it off a little bit it's looking nice um, there's a few annoying lights I think it's other cameras so and I hate when they got this glow because they can be a little bit difficult to remove so I'm just gonna use the spot removal it's done a pretty good job it's still a bit of a blue shade going on there probably spent a bit more time fixing that to be honest but just for the sake of speed and let's get rid of that camera there so it's done a really good job 
so yeah that's really helped clear up the distractions the foreground's a bit out of focus so I might darken it just to <laughs> sort of hide it from view something like that Mm, mm, mm. And I might add a bit more contrast to the sky. Might even fade this a bit more softly. Yeah, that looks looking good. Maybe a little bit of a pop in the Milky Way. I'd normally use my Milky Way pop preset, but let's just do um, just a bit of freestyle. Um, so I might pop the whites a little bit just to make it stand out drop the shadows just to darken the sort of dark nebulae and the great rift and maybe a touch of clarity I'm not the biggest fan of clarity because it adds noise but it can sometimes help just give that Milky Way a little pop against the rest of the image that's looking really nice um, might try some split tone in, see if we can cool off the shadows a little bit, put a little bit of blue in the shadows. But I don't want to throw off the balance of the image too much. Something like that, maybe? Is that doing much? Yeah. It's kind of just cooling things off and just adding a nice bit of colour separation. What about the highlights? Maybe a bit of warmth in the highlights? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's really nice. Might actually add a little pop to the reds just to get that get the hydrogen alpha nebulae popping a little bit. Just boost the purple and the magentas just a touch. Don't look too crazy. Just realised I haven't done any noise reduction yet, so I'm going to come into the detail tab and whoops, A7S is obviously really good in low light. Might make the sharpening a little finer. Add some masking. I'm going to hold Alt as well when I do the masking just so I can see where the sharpening is being applied so just the white areas are now being sharpened rather than the entire image that looks a lot cleaner now nice this is a really nice image and the other thing is like sometimes when I want to add a bit of saturation instead of using the saturation vibrant sliders I typically use the um, saturation on the blue primary channel it's just a lot more aesthetically pleasing than the saturation and and vibrant sliders. I might have gone a little bit too far there. And actually, I'm going to bring the magentas down a bit. That's a little bit too crazy. Yeah, that's really nice. Really nice single exposure. Good dark skies. Good settings. Nicely composed as well. I love it when there's a bit of breathing space around the edge of the frame. Just sort of framing the image nicely. Uh, got satin kind of on the edge of the frame there, but it's not the end of the world. It's not too distracting. Um, and I, I might crop a little bit of that foreground actually. Uh, if you press O, you can have different overlays, by the way. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio. Just to go a bit freestyle on it. Cut that edge off there. Perhaps. Get rid of that dead space. Get rid of this dead space. Yeah. There we go. I like that. Great image. But that is it, guys. I hope there have been some useful tips and tricks in there for you, some stuff that you perhaps didn't know before. Um, I hope it was useful. There will be a longer version over on my Patreon where I covered everybody's images, not just the three um, that you saw today. So do consider coming over and supporting this channel over on Patreon if you'd like to get involved. There's some other exclusive tutorials and stuff over on there and I'm sort of building it up slowly. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.